So, hello. Uh, welcome to the AMC8 prep workshop. My name is Ethan Poon, and this is brought to you by Logistem. And a little bit about the presentation before we go on slash lecture. Um, for 30, I'll be including 30 problems from various AMC8 tests, which are usually from problems one through 20. And I'll show you these problems five at a time, give you a few minutes and then explain them. And if we still have time at the end of class, we'll go to some harder problems. Uh, I put in five of these, and these are problems 21 through 25 of random AMC8 tests. And again, I'll be looking at chat to answer questions, but if you wanna tell me your answer, which I know one of you will, um, message me privately because the thing about sending to everyone, it means that you're actually sending to everyone and everyone will be able to see it. And that's not good. Please don't spoil the answer or problem for anybody. Let them work them out for ourselves. And if you guys got all that, then we'll be good. So here's the first set of five problems. I'll let you guys work on it for a few minutes and then I'll go over them. You can ask me in the chat if you have any questions.
Okay, it seems like a fair few of you have done all five problems already, so I'll go ahead and explain them. Uh, let me just get the annotate. So for the first problem, it says the five digit number 2018U is divisible by nine. What is the remainder when this number is div divisible by eight? I think that's supposed to be, say divided. Um, so yeah, anyway. Uh, so this five digit number is 2018U. So a cool trick in determining whether a number is divisible by nine is if you add all the digits and they equal to some number that's divisible by nine, then the original number is also div divisible by nine. And looking at this, um, we get 11 plus u equals some number, I'll call it x. And if x has to be divisible by nine, then the only possibility for u to be a single digit number is for it to be seven. And that just has x equaling 18. And so we have our five digit number, which is 2018u. And the question asks us, uh, 2018, sorry, sorry. And the question asks us, what is the remainder when this number is divided by eight? So we do 20, 18, seven divided by eight. And for this, you can actually ignore the 20 at the beginning because anything that's div anything um, divisible by a thousand is also divisible by eight. So what remains is 187 and 18, D7 divided by eight gives you a remainder of three. Is it? Yeah, I think it's three. Uh, so that answer choice is B and it's number one. Moving on to number two. Number two says the harmonic mean of a set of non-zero numbers is the reciprocal of the average of the reciprocals of the numbers. What is the harmonic mean of one, two, and four? Okay. So for this, we're gonna have to find the average of the reciprocals of the numbers first. So the reciprocals are one over one, one over two, and one over four. You add them together, you get seven over four. And we're calculating the, the average. So seven over four divided by three equals seven over 12. And the reciprocal of that is one, seven over 12. And the reciprocal of that is 12 over seven. And that is answer choice C. Moving on to number three. So Professor Chang has nine different language books lined up on a bookshelf. Two of them are Arabic, three of them are German, and four of them are Spanish. And how many ways are there to arrange the nine books on the shelf, keeping the Arabic books together and keeping the Spanish books together? So for this problem, since the Arabic books and the Spanish books are together, you can treat them as if they're one singular book. So what this means is we do one plus one plus three, the one being the Arabic books. Uh, remember, we're keeping them together. So we're treating them as one book. Same for the Spanish books. The three are coming from the German books because it doesn't really say if you have to keep them together. And so you don't have to keep them together, I guess. So one plus one plus three equals five. And five, and that gives us five factorial, which is just a fancy way of saying five times three, four times three, 
times two times one. And this, how we get this is from uh, rearranging all of these quote unquote books. Uh, again, because we're, we're keeping this Arabic and the Spanish together around. So we have five spaces for the first one, four for the second, three for the third, uh, two for the fourth, and only one possibility for the last one. And this gives us 120. But remember, we still have those Arabic and Spanish books right next to each other. And you can switch them around. For example, for the Arabic, you can have Arabic book one and Arabic book two, and then Arabic book two, and then Arabic book one, and they'd still be the same if you don't multiply as we're gonna do right now. So for the Arabic, we're doing two factorial and the German, and I mean Spanish, we're doing four factorial for the exact same re reason. And so four, four for the first, three to, for the second, two for the third, and then one for the last one, and then the same with two factorial. And so one, this says 120 times two times 24. And calculating this should give us 5760 possibilities, which is answer choice C. Moving on to number four. When Clara totaled her scores, she inadvertently reversed the units digit and tens digit of one score. By which of the following might her incorrect sum have differed from the correct one? So here we're assuming that obviously her score is a number from zero to a hundred. And so there's two letter, there's only a tens digit and a units digit. So we'll call that number A, B, and that's our two digit number. Now A, B, means as a two digit number obviously it just means 10a plus b with the 10 being a being the tens and b being the units but remember she did switch the units and the tens so what she added was 10b plus a so the difference between these is absolute value if you guys learned that yet uh 9a minus 9b that's value and for this, we can factor nine out of it. So nine, absolute value, nine times A plus B. And this doesn't really give us the actual difference of the two scores, but if you, if you look closely, it has to be divisible by nine. And looking at the answers, the only one that's divisible by nine is answer choice A which is 45. Oh yeah, that's the answer for number four. Okay. Number five, Bridget, Cassie, and Hannah are discussing the results of their last math test. Hannah shows Bridget and Cassie her test, but Bridget and Cassie don't show theirs to anyone. Cassie says, I didn't get the lowest score in our class. And Bridget adds, I didn't get the highest score. What is the ranking of the three girls from highest to lowest? So in the problem, Anna shows Bridget and Cassie her test, but Bridget and Cassie all, only know their own or Hannah's test. They don't know anyone else's. So when Cassie looks at Hannah, she says, I didn't get the lowest score, which means she knows that someone scored lower than her, and that someone is Hannah. Uh, and Bridget says, I didn't get the highest score. And the only one she knows is herself and Hannah. Well, that just means that Hannah gets got a higher score than Bridget. So we express that with H greater than B. So we have our two inequalities, but we can combine them. So we have Cassie is greater than Hannah and is greater than Bridget. So this is obviously from highest to lowest. And so we have Cassie, Hannah, Bridget, and the answer that has that is answer choice B, I mean D.
Okay. So do you guys have any questions? If so, you can type them in the chat and I'll get to it. Nope. Okay. Moving on to the next set. Uh, so here are five more problems and I'll give you a few moments to work on them. And again, if you have any questions, just ask me in the chat. That's it. Okay. Uh, so I think that's um, enough time if we want to get to the end. So for number six, how many whole numbers are in between five over three and two pi? So five over three just means like 1.6666, which is, which is more than one, but less than two. And two pi, if you guys know what that is, is approximately 6.328, which is less than seven. Um, so yeah, six, two pi is also more than six. So in between five over three and two pi, we have two, we have two, three, four, five, and six, which if you can count them is five whole numbers. So five whole numbers, this means D. So yeah, if you got that, good job. Moving on to number seven, three dice with faces numbered one through six are stacked as shown. Seven of the 18 faces are visible, leaving 11 faces hidden back, bottom, and between. Uh, the total number of dots not visible in this view is dot, dot, dot. So the way to you, the, you can count the dots not visible in this view by like just looking at the dots that are in view. So each, there are three dice. Each of them have numbers one through six. So we're gonna add one through six and that's 21. Since we have three dice, 21 times three equals 63. And it's asking for the dots that are not visible. So if we subtract the ones that are visible from the number of total dots, then we'll get how many dots are not visible. So it's something called complementary probability. We'll eventually learn that in school. So 63 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1. Uh, and those are the seven faces shown on this little figure on the side. So that's 63, 63 minus 20, 22, and that's 41 which is answer choice D. Then going on to number eight, an integer between 1000 to 9999 inclusive is chosen at random. What is the probability that it is an odd integer whose digits are all distinct? Um, so we have four digits here. So we're all, I'm going to take a look at the last digit. And the last digit, because it's an odd number, only has five possibilities. So one, three, five, seven, and nine. So that's a five back there. And then we're going to go back to the first digit. So the first digit. Um, in a digit, there's 10 possibilities, zero through nine, but as a fourth, as a four digit number, the first digit cannot be zero. So that one's, so it's back down to nine, but 
because we've chosen one digit for the last digit, it's also down to eight because all digits are distinct, meaning just all digits are different. So we can't have overlapping digits. So nine becomes eight and that's the first digit. Now the second digit is the same as the first one, but now we can use zero. So because we've already chosen two numbers, eight or left, and because we can use zero, we don't have to subtract anything. So this one's also eight. I'm just gonna move that back there. And now we're back at the third digit. So the third digit, again, we can use zero because it's not the first digit. So we've already chosen three digits from our 10 digit sample space. So 10 minus three is seven. So we have eight possibilities for the first digits, eight for the second, seven for the third, and five for the last digit. So eight times eight times seven times five. And that is equal uh, and that is equal to 64 times 30. I'm gonna extend this text box and mouse won't help. So that equals 64 times 35, but we're actually not done. You don't have to multiply this. I just multiplied it because it's easier. Um, so we have to divide by 9,000 because it's asking for the probability that this is an odd integer whose digits are all distinct. So it's 9,999 minus 999, which is again 9,000. So if you do 64 times 35, divide by 9,000, I'll get 56 times divided by 225. And that is answer choice. Clear. And then moving on. So number nine, Alicia, Brenda, and Colby were the candidates of a, in a recent election for student gamer president. I don't know where that gamer came in. <laughs> but yeah, the pie chart below shows how the votes were distributed among the three candidates. If Brenda received 36... 36 votes, then how many votes were cast all together? So 2017 number two. So Brenda received 36 votes and this chart down here says 36 votes is also 30% of the total, which we'll call X. So 30% X equals 30, 30% X equals 36. So you, if you divide by three and multiply by 10, you get the actual X, which is 120. So we have 120 total votes. And yeah, that's the answer. So that's answer choice E. Then number 10, a square shaped floor is covered with congruent square tiles. If the total number of tiles that lie on the two diagonals is 37, how many tiles that cover the floor? So we know that the number of squares on the side, the side length is odd because if you've uh, ever looked at a chess board, or you guys play chess or anything, it's an eight by eight. It's an eight by eight uh, square and the diagonals, the long diagonals don't overlap. And that's even, so it's even because a number to multiply by two is always even. But in this one, the two diagonals is 37, which is not an even number. So they do have an overlapping square. So that just makes that the side length is odd. So because it's odd, we can say that 37 equals two X minus one, where X is the side length because two X minus one is guaranteed to be an odd number. And X is, again, the side length. So for this, we'll just solve for X. So 30 X, 38 equals two X because you add one to both sides, then you divide by two, so you get X equals 19. 
And because the side length is 19 and you're finding how many total tiles cover the floor, you multiply 19 by 19 because it's a square. Uh, so you get 361, just answer choice C. So are there any questions pertaining to problems six and 10? No, okay. So here are the next uh, 11 through 15 problems. So you can work on those. So now that you had a chance to hopefully look at these problems, maybe get an idea about these, I'm just gonna go over them. Annotate, so. Number 11, Jeremy's father drives him to school in rush hour traffic in 20 minutes. Well, one day there's no traffic. So his father can drive him 18 miles per hour faster than usual and get him to school in 12 minutes. How far in miles is it to school? So if you've learned this in science, uh, then you'll say that distance equals rate times time, where rate is measured in hours and time is measured in uh, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, whatever. And for the first one, he drives him to school in 20 minutes. So time equals one over three hours. So it's D equals R over three. And the next equation we have one day there's no traffic and his father drives him to school 18 miles per hour faster. So R plus 18 and gets him to school in 12 minutes, which is one fifth of an hour. So we divide by five. So with these two equations at the bottom, not the one at the top, you'll see that they're both equal. So R over three, equals r plus 18 over five. And in this, we subtract r over five from both sides and you get two, two r over 15 equals 18 over five. And multiplying both sides by 15, you get two r equals 
54 and r equals 27. And we're not finding r, we're finding the distance. So because we're using the first equation, I guess it's easier, d equals 27 over three because r equals 27, which is nine. So the distance is nine miles. Just answer choice. Moving on to number 12. At Euler Middle School, 198 students vo voted on two issues in a school referendum with the following results. 149 voted in favor of the first issue and 119 voted in favor of the second issue. If there were exactly 29 students who voted against both issues, how many students voted in favor of both issues? So 29 students vote against both issues. So we can just subtract them from the whole to get how many people uh, voted for at least one issue. So that number is 169, 169 students voted. So yeah, so I'm gonna call the first issue, issue A and the second issue, issue B. And 149 got uh, issue A and 119 voted for issue B, as it says. And as you can see, 149 plus 119 is a whole lot more than 169. So there has to be some overlapping and that's the people who voted for both issues. So if you wanna find that, this is what we're doing. So, We'll do 149 plus 119 minus 169. And this gives us how many students voted in favor of both issues. Because if you voted in favor of both issues, obviously you're going to cast two ballots. And subtracting the total number of students, the total number of students who actually voted, um, you're basically taking away one ballot from every person who voted. So if you voted for only one, now you have zero, so that's gone. But if you voted two, you still have one. So we have, that's 99. So we have 99 who still have that one ballot over one. And 99, and that just gives us how many students voted for both issues and 99 is answer choice. So yeah, cool. And number 13 is oh, 2020 number one. And Luca's making lemonade to sell at a school fundraiser. His recipe requires four times as much water as sugar and twice as much sugar as lemon juice. And he uses three cups of lemon juice. How many cups of water does he need? So here we're gonna wanna find a ratio of water to sugar to lemon juice. So he has twice as many, twice as much sugar as lemon juice. So we have one part lemon juice, we have two parts sugar. And he has four times as much water as sugar because we have two parts sugar, we now have eight parts of water. So now our ratio is eight to two to one and that's water to sugar to lemon juice. Now the problem says he has three cups of lemon juice. So we have three cups of lemon juice. We have to multiply everything by three to keep a consistent ratio. So eight times three is 24 and two times three, six and one times three is three. And the question is asking how many cups of water does he need? Now remember we assign the first value here which is the eight as water. So the first value here is also water. So the 24 is water and let's answer choice E. And number 14, which each of the points A, B, C, D, E and F in the figure represent a different digit from one to six. Each of the five lines shown passes through some of these points. The digits along each line are added to produce five sums 
one for each line. The total of the five sums is 47. What is the digit represented by B? So we're using this figure down here. I like copy and pasted it. So each of the, there's five lines and we're adding all of them together and the total is 47. So the first line is A plus F plus E. Second line is B plus D. And the third line is C plus D plus E. The fourth line is B, B plus F. And the last one is A plus B plus C. So add all these together and you get 47. So when you add all these together, you get two, two A plus three B plus two C plus two D plus two E plus two F. And that equals 47. Now, if you can technically factor this and take the leftover B, so you do two plus a times A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. And then plus that extra B, that equals 47. And because each of the points A, B, C, D, and E, e and F represent a different digits from one to six, A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F has to also equal one plus three plus three plus four plus five plus six. And add the extra B again, and that's 47. Now, from here, it's pretty simple to find B. So you just do 42 plus B equals 47, 47, and B equals 5, which is answer choice E. And then number 15, Aaron, Darren, Karen, Marin, and Sharon rode on a small train that has five cars that seat one person each. Marin sat in the last car. Aaron sat directly behind Sharon. Darren sat in one of the cars in front of Aaron. At least one person sat between Karen and Darren and who sat in the middle car. So we know that, I'm just gonna put this here. Uh, Mar Marin uh, sat in the last car. So I'm just doing the last car for the first car. So this is from back to front. So in all of them, there's three possibilities here. All of the possibilities, Marin sat in the last car again. And Aaron sat directly behind Sharon. And Darren sat in one of the cars in front of Aaron. And so, wait, I'm gonna double check this. Yep. A, so one of them is there. And then AS, then A, S. So, in the first possibility, uh, Sharon sits at the front. And the second, Sharon sits in the second, second to front. And in the third one, Sharon sits right in the middle. Um, so, yeah. so for the last one, we either have DK or KD, or just Karen and Darren. And this is impossible because uh, Darren sits in one of the cars in front of Karen. But in the last one, it says, one person sat between Karen and Darren. But if Karen and Darren are right next to each other, then there's nothing between them. That's the whole point of being next to each other. So that one's impossible. So for the second one, which is right in the middle here, uh, we have Aaron sitting in the middle seat and Sharon sitting in the next to front seat, which is the second one. And this one is possible because you can have uh, Darren sitting right in front and Karen sitting in the back. And yep, that works. And just to be sure, we're gonna check the first possibility. And the first possibility doesn't work because 
Uh, Dar it says Darren signed one card in front of Aaron, but the only person here in front of Aaron is Sharon. So there's no one there because there's only one spot in front of Aaron, and that's already taken. So this one's impossible. So the second one is possible. And looking here, the person who sits in the middle car is A, which is Aaron. That is answer choice A. So does that make sense? You guys can tell me in the chat. So here are some problems. And I'll wait again a couple minutes for you to take a look at these and solve them before going over them. Um, so it's been a couple minutes, so I'll start explaining these. So number 16, Julie is preparing a speech for her class. The speech must last between one half hour and three quarters of an hour. The, uh, the ideal rate of speech is 150 words per minute. If Julie speaks at the ideal rate, which of the following number of words would be an appropriate length for her speech? So her speech, uh, last between one half hour and three quarters of an hour, which is wait, why won't my mouse work? Which is thirty minutes, minutes to forty-five minutes, and with the ideal rate between one hundred and fifty words per minute. So we can multiply one hundred and fifty by thirty. That gives us a lower bound for our ideal speech. And 150 times 45 give us the upper limit of our speech capacity. 
So let's just say the number of words in our speech is X. And X is between 4,500 and 6,750. And looking at the answer choices, the only one that fits this is answer choice E, which is 5650. And that's number 16. For number 17, there is a set of five positive integers whose average slash mean is five, whose median is five, and whose only mode is eight. What is the difference between the largest and smallest integers in this set? So the average is five and there's five positive integers. So that just tells us that total, if we add all these numbers together, what we should get is 25 because five times five is five, 25. And the median means that the middle number here is five and the only mode is eight. So because you can't have three eights because that would mean that five is not the median and eight would be the median, there's only two eights. So eight. So that just leaves the lower two numbers. And we can go ahead and calculate what how, how much numbers remain for these two numbers. So five plus eight plus eight, equals 21. So the last two numbers added together will be four. So you can't have two and two because if you have two and two, then eight wouldn't be the only mode. It would be two and eight would be the modes, but the only eight is the only mode. And so you can't have two and two. So our only option here is to have one and three. So eight would also remain the only mode. So one is the smallest integer and the, diff and the largest is eight. So the difference between the largest and smallest integer is obviously seven because eight minus one, seven. And that is answer choice D. So that's number 17. And at the grocery store last week, Small boxes of facial tissue were priced at four boxes for $5. This week they were on sale for at five boxes for $4. This percent increase, this percent decrease in their price per box during the sale was closest to. So the best way to go about this problem is calculate how much one box costed. And for Last week, one box would be five over four, which is a dollar and 25 cents. But this week, there are five boxes for four dollars. So now it's four over five, and that is 80 cents. So what we're calculating here is 0 0.80 over 1.25 and if if you do the math obviously um this will equal 0 0.64 and because we're asking for the percent decrease in the price per box from last week we do one minus 0 0.64 and that gives us 3, 0 0.36 but if you look at the answers 0 0.36 or 36 percent is not there and it's asking during the sale was closest to, and if you look at the right answer choices, the one that 36 is closest to is 35%. It's answer choice B. And then number seven, 19. Six pepperoni circles will exactly fit across the diameter of a 12 inch pizza when placed. If a total of 24 circles of pepperoni are placed on this pizza without overlap, what fraction of the pizza is covered by pepperoni? So six pepperoni circles fits on 12 inches. So one pepperoni circle fits in two inches. So the diameter 
of one pepperoni is two inches. So that just means the radius is one inch. It has radius, a radius is half the diameter. And 24 of these circles of pepperoni can be placed on this pizza without overlap. So we're gonna find the area of one pepperoni. So to do that, we do pi r squared. So r squared is one times one, which is again, obviously one. So pi r squared just means pi and then times 24 because we have 24 pepperoni is 24 pi. And this entire pizza, the diameter is 12 inch, which means the radius of this entire pizza is six inches. So we do the pi r squared trick to do the, to find the area of this circle, which gives us six times six times pi, is 36 pi. That's the radius, and that's the area of the entire circle. So what fraction of this pizza is covered by pepperoni? So 24 pi is covered in pepperoni out of this 36. So 24 pi over 36 pi equals 24, 36, and that equals two over three, which is answer choice. And I think 20 would be our last problem today because we're nearing the end of our session. So yeah. Number 20, a jar contains five different colors of gumdrops. 30% are blue, 20% are brown, 15% are red, 10% are yellow, and the other 30 gumdrops are green. If half of the blue gumdrops are replaced with brown gumdrops, how many gumdrops will be brown? So we have 100% is our total, 100% is the total, and 30 are blue minus 20, which are brown, 15, which are red, 10 with that are yellow. And if you subtract all those, uh, we should get 25. So 25, 25% of our entire jar of gumdrops, which I'll call X is 30 and those are green. So X must equal 120. And it says if half of blue gumdrops are replaced with gum, brown gumdrops, how many gumdrops will be brown? So let's find how many gumdrops are actually blue in the first place. So 30% X is 36. 20% X equals 24. So now half of 36 is now brown. So 36 over two plus the original 24, which are brown. And we get 18 is 24 equals 42. And that is answer choice C. Okay. So, I think that's gonna be it for today. We're not gonna have enough time to go to the other problems. So thanks for coming. And this is my email if you want the other problems or you just wanna ask anything. And yep, that's it. Thank you, bye.